Good morning, Velvet Games! Welcome back into the D&D &D realm, where I will be DMing this day's campaign. Uh, you might see this over multiple videos, might be one. Depends on how long our guys last. We'll find out. I'm Jason. I'm Austin. I'm Nick. And I'm Zach. And this is Velvet Games. <laughs> All right, as we guys get uh, get into it today, uh, let's let's hear some introductions of characters. Whatever you want to introduce to those at home. So my character's name is uh, Dante Alighieri. Um, he is a Tortle Echo Knight. That's kind of it. He's just a good dude in a shell. In a shell. Okay. Uh, I'm playing a Kenku Soul Knife Rogue. Uh, he stands at exactly three feet six inches tall, and his name is Whisper. Uh, <clears throat> I'm playing a human cleric named Helios Dimakos, and uh, he is a light domain cleric. Uh, he has uh, taken a holy vow to unleash the power of the sun. So. All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> Those are our three adventurers today. Um for those at home, I've advised our players to, to not be too attached. Their characters might die. We may never see them again. Let's find out. So, you guys start in the bustling town of Silverhaven on the continent of Eldoria. Located in the heart of this continent, it serves as a central hub where travelers, merchants, ro rogue people, adventurers, so on, come to converge. And uh, nestled amid, uh, amid rolling hills and lush forests, it's just a nice, peaceful pa place inside the city. You know that in the centerpiece of the town is a large tavern called the Silverhaven Tavern. It's very large with a nice, intricate woodwork and silver accents. And inside, a very lively at atmosphere. And in a little corner is called the Adventurer's uh, Hub. And it's usually where you guys hang out, where the three of you get nail, and the people inside the city recognize you as their adventurers. There's not many people that do what you do, and inside the city, they all come to you for what they need. Um, also inside of uh, Silverhaven, right across, not too far from it at least, lies Silverstone Stadium, a marvel of architecture and entertainment. The stadium's expan expansive oval design is home of thousands of spectators where people enter for epic gladiatorial battles and not... To limit to enchanting magical duels, people dying, people living, people winning, so on. Uh, it hosts a bunch of different other events as well. Sometimes bards have concerts in there. Sometimes rogues have a good little uh, dueling fight at, for honor. Slash while they distract half the townspeople to steal their gold. Um, but yeah, Fair. and on the outsides of this town is teeming with lurking monsters. Fearful villagers and concerned town officials often seek aid of you guys to go take care of them. And you guys have known to make a few, a few good gold <laughs> coins in your pocket just by slaughtering some heavy monsters that you've had to deal with. Um, yeah, that is the layout of the town. You got, We're going to be starting with you guys in your adventure's den, just conducting business as usual around with a couple of ales and just enjoying each other's company for a little bit. And I pass it over to you guys. Okay. I'm just just drinking. Just drinking. Just man. drinking. Man's just drinking. Just drinking. Taking shot after shot. Shot after yeah. shot. <laughs> what else would you do as a turtle? Um, Whisper is going to be kind of walking around. Um, he has a very peculiar thing that he does when he's out and about. <clears throat> um, he'll gather up discarded, bent up, broken up, like, forks off the road, and he'll just kind of hand them out to people. He's, his background is City Watch, so he's been kind of here in Silverhaven for pretty much his whole life, helping the people. Um, they've pretty much picked up on this weird habit of his, so it's generally seen as like a gesture of like good faith and like, hey, I hope you're having a good day today. Here's a broken fork. So that's kind of what Whisper is going to be doing here. Uh, if he sees any new faces here in the tavern, he's just going to be handing out a broken fork to any new faces he sees, probably getting some confused looks back. Um, he doesn't say a word the entire time. Okay. And Hillis? Uh, 
I should be. I guess I'll just be sitting at the table drinking too. I'm right. gonna be standing out front, screaming the the words of your patron out to the people. <laughs> We are but worms <laughs> in the dirt. <laughs> Beautiful Talos. No. Well, as you guys are walking around or sitting drinking, mm -hmm. you guys are, see a burly, boisterous man with a very thick salt and pepper beard come into the tavern. And you just hear him take this large breath in. Adventurers! I could use you. And he just, just strolls over into the adventurer's den and goes, my name is Thaddeus. Thaddeus Stoneborn. Nice to meet you. And he goes to shake your hand, uh, Dante. I will shake his hand. He grabs your club of a hand and, and looks that? looks over and looks around and goes, So, the three of you are the adventurer's den, huh? Well, I have an interesting proposition for you boys, if you'd be willing to make some gold along the way. Yeah, sure, I guess. Well... <laughs> It's very simple. <laughs> I have monsters that we have captured <laughs> in my stadium that yeah. I would love to see you guys go against for sport. And hey, if you guys are willing to, fight each other or one of my other champions. I'll pay you handsomely for each monster you defeat and any other combatant that you go against. Where is this at? At the Silverstone Stadium, my boy. And you can see on his his cloak that he's wearing he's wearing an insignia of the stadium and you see that he's very he has a very large sack of gold all around his belt oh, can't say that uh, <laughs> no, you, can't. No, you cannot so okay so his proposition he gave us just now is to either to go fight monsters in the stadium in the stadium or go fight some of his people yeah okay so we could do either or correct okay have I seen this person before? Yeah. Okay, so I don't give him a fork. Okay, no. <laughs> As he's he's trying to convince you guys, he's continuing talking it up. Uh, another uh, a smaller woman comes in. You can recognize that she's a half elf, and uh, she also sits on the council for uh, Silverhaven. And her name is Eliza Fairwind, and she comes in and goes, "Excuse me, sirs. I I tr I'm sorry to trouble you. I just have a." a a small request, if 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 you may, um, and her her hushed tone. She tries to kind of come in a little closer, so it's only the three of you that can hear. It. And she goes, "We've, we've um, we've had some merchants and different people be, uh, ransacked by monsters on the outskirts. And I was, I was just wondering if you could um, follow one of our merchants there to the next city and back. It it should only be two or three days travel, and I will reimburse for all fees and." And we could pay you out of the city's coffers. <laughs> Whispers on board for it. How much? Well, we have we have a uh, intricate magical items that we could give you uh, as gold or uh, gold, whatever whatever works for you. You say people are being attacked. Yes. And you're thinking about money. I'm gonna look at the the other dude. Am I protecting anyone with you? He goes, well, uh, protecting our spirits and morale of the city for sure. Yeah, I don't care about that. I'm helping her. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that was so fast. Well, if you, my door is always open. Feel free. And he, he puts down this little, like, insignia, metal Silverstone Stadium, and just puts it down. As a little aside, my character's a bodyguard. <laughs> That's oh. fair. So... Whisper is going to give him, he's going to give Thaddeus a fork, but it is bent at a perfect 90 degree angle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just hand that to him. <laughs> okay. Blessings be upon you, man. Remember to drink the elixir of life that comes from the fruit. Okay. Very well, sir. Uh, you gentlemen have a lovely day. And he goes, well, who needs a drink? I do. And he starts to, you see him going across the other side of the tavern, just pounding back ales. Wow, he is slamming them back. Not even orange hey, juice. Hey, good on him. Yeah. yeah. So Whisper's he, on board for this. He heard protecting merchants. Yes. He's he's already used to doing this. So the, the crew is going with the merchants. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So Eliza tells you, well, they leave first thing in the morning. And, um, They should... They should be right by the front gate if you want to join them there in the morning. Um, feel free to um, 
treat yourself on me. And she throws throws in about twenty gold coins onto onto the uh, table for you guys. Please get some rest. You get, you guys go ahead and take that money. I've got everything I need. Uh, are there windows in this establishment? Yes. I'll look outside and see. Like, how, is it like daytime? Yeah, it's it? a, like almost. It's a, like. It's like dusk. It's about to be nighttime. So we have like a full day, basically. You have like no, no. It's about to be night. The it, night. They're leaving oh. in the morning. Yeah. Okay. But if you'd like to do okay. something, you could do it now. Why'd you do that to me right now? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's dusk approaching night. So we have the night, and mm-hmm. then in the morning yes. is when the merchants leave. Okay. Correct. <laughs> Works for me. Oh, so we're basically escorting them. Yeah. Okay. We are going to be guard <clears throat> duty for yes. them. That's perfect. In the event something astronomically tragic happens to them, wink. Right. So, okay, uh, so, so we, should, we should all probably get a good night's rest. Yeah, Whisper's gonna Whisper's gonna prep for the the trip the uh, the trip to come. He's gonna spend the night prepping, just okay. getting any last minute rations or small things. What small things are you looking to get? Uh, specifically, he's going to get more forks off the street if he <laughs> finds any. And more specifically, he's going to uh, top off his bag of a thousand ball bearings. Okay. As you do. Yeah. We gotta, <laughs> As one does, if yeah. If people gotta, don't want forks, the next the next best thing he gives them is a ball bearing. You got to top off your <laughs> sack of ball bearings. You got to tack off, you gotta tack <laughs> you off, do there, top off my sack of ball bearings. You do yeah. need to make sure the sack of ball bearings is full. Yeah, the sack of balls. Anyways. Yep, um, I'm going to top off my sack of ball bearings. Dante, is there uh, anything <laughs> that you'd like to prepare? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to follow him okay. to get his forks. Okay. Because I have the biggest fork of all, the trident. The trident. <laughs> Helios, anything else? Uh, uh, so I'm just gonna refill my uh, so I have my holy uh, symbol is a, a, a ornate glass bottle with the symbol of the sun on it. Okay. Right? So I'm just gonna refill it with the elixir. What is the elixir? It is <laughs> an orange liquid. Very well. <laughs> Hate it here. <laughs> okay. okay. I accidentally already spoiled it when, when the guy walked away, but I don't think anyone heard me, so. It's all right, fam. I heard you. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you guys do that throughout the night. You guys get some rest, and as you wake up early in the morning, the merchants are waiting for you at the front gate. As you guys venture outside of the city, the merchants are literally looking around every direction just trying to see where monsters are going to come from. Um, now, Dante, you have the alert feed, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you <clears throat> do see an owl bear. I'm sorry, you see a harpy not too far in the distance. Oh, that's arguably worse. <laughs> Out in the distance? Yeah, about, uh, let's say about 60 feet away from you guys. Uh, probably like 120, actually. Let's do that. Is it... <clears throat> It is flying by one of the trees. You see it's Towards over- us or? Yeah, towards you. So we've already left the city. Yeah. Yeah. We are in the, we are currently en route. Okay. Um, where am I standing you in this caravan? Am I, am I just, where, where, where is the caravan uh, according, like, like, is it like here and then yeah. we're kind of standing yeah. around it? Yeah, you guys are standing around it in like okay. a triangle formation. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna. <laughs> Horrifying. Hey guys, there's a, uh. There's a harpy coming. Okay. Whisper uh, stands at the ready. Um, something to note about Whisper, um, he doesn't have any visible weapons on him. Okie doke. As the uh, merchants hear that, they go, what are these guys going to do? This guy doesn't have a weapon. This guy has a giant fork. I haven't even seen what this guy does, but he's carrying around that big bottle of juice. Hey, Helios, can I get some of your juice? Bro, always. Drink up, fam. Thanks, man. I hate I'm it. I'm going to take a, take a drink <laughs> of, the, <laughs> of the wonderful citrus. We're going does to imbibe it, of the fruit of uh, the elixir of life. Yes. Does it do anything, Helios? Does it? <laughs> does it? Just, every, just like, as, a, as, a, as a player question, does, does, does it? Can it? It can. 
Okay. It rejuvenates there, the soul, cleanses there, the body. Is there any enchantment or anything put onto this? Oh no, I mean that's just it's just my holy symbol. Oh, I got you. Got so, you. Yeah, no, no, yeah. So I'm refreshed. You are yeah. refreshed. You're refreshed. You, you got, have it. You have imbibed you have, the elixir. You, you have, have vitamin D now. You have the vitamin D. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, sir. I hate right. it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Has anyone caught on his character yet? <laughs> As you take a swig of the vitamin D, it, the harpy moves 40 feet closer. It is 80 feet from you guys right now. 80 feet? Mm-hmm. I don't think it's close enough still. Um, Dang. No, it's not. Let's see. That's fine. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's not close enough yet. Okay. Actually, yeah. It's in fireball range. It, yes, yes, it is. Huh? <laughs> it is. It is in fireball. It is range. in fireball range. Uh, Are you gonna fireball it? Uh, should I? <laughs> I? I don't know, man. Do you want to? It's just one harpy. Oh, okay. It's only the one, right? Yeah. Okay. okay I mean, yeah, harpy. it's just one. So this little box is the caravan, right? Sure. Right. So the harpy is coming from which direction? The front. So it's coming so, directly from this way. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna stand things. in the front. Yep. Create an echo. And just shield up. Okay. Question. So for something like Bless, right, mm-hmm. like the spell, um, does his echo count as a separate thing? Like a separate creature? Or? No, I don't believe so. No? No, I think it does because it becomes a copy of him. It, it has, has like, all of his same it, stats. Does it, does it make HP. separate roles? It has AC, it has HP. It doesn't make separate roles, though. It just, it no, has, it does not, yeah. It is the same size as you, and it occupies its its space. Sure. I, I don't. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna. Yeah, it's time. Bless up. So what I'll do is I'll cast bless. <laughs> okay. Uh, so before they make an attack or save roll, they may choose to add one d4 to their result. So I'll I'll choose the echo, uh, the turtle, and the the whisper. Yeah. Okay. What's your name? Dante. Whisper. Dante. Oh, sorry. That's Dante. Easy to Dante. Dante. <laughs> yeah. So all three of you are now yeah, blessed boy, by boy, the power of the sun. <laughs> all right. Uh, the, but yeah, I'm ca- yeah, I'm casting that as a uh, you gotta, first level. You gotta so. hit him with the yeah. Watch that boy go in. Bless up. <laughs> the harpy comes, gets closer. It is now forty it's feet from right, you guys. Okay. Go ahead and roll initiative, boys. Roll initiative. Yeah. Heck yeah. Roll it. Two. Roll Heck it. yeah. Twenty-two. Heck no. Ten. <clears throat> is that a six or a nine? Ten. Uh, so you both have ten. Yeah. What's you guys' dex? Uh, um, plus four. Probably less than that. Plus two. Okay, so go uh, Dante, then Whisper, then Helios, then the Harpy. Oh. Oh, the Harpy rolled low. Yeah. Yikes. Yay. So it is 40 feet away from you. It is in the air, but okay. it's only about 10 feet in the air. 10 feet in the air. Mm-hmm. Um, Still in the front, mm-hmm. Um, Dante is going to take... Uh, 10 feet of movement forward, go into a shell, and command the echo to stay by the uh, uh, by the caravan. So you yourself are 30 feet in front of, or 30 feet away from the harpy, and Correct. the echo is right in front of the caravan. Yes, it can't be more than 30, so right. I'll say the echo is 25 feet away from me. It's, it's like, if this is the, if I'm here, the, it's like right here. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, whisper? Uh, you said it's 40 feet away? Yeah, from you. Okay, cool. Um, from a hidden pocket inside my cloak, I'm going to retrieve a dagger and throw it. Okay. In the same motion that I'm throwing the dagger, in my other hand, I am forming a blade, a spectral blade in my hand that I'm also throwing at the harpy. Okay. Hmm. I need... Ooh, Yikes. Nat 20. Uh, does a 13 hit the harpy? Yes, it does. Okay. Yikes. Okay. Uh, so that'll be the dagger. So that's seven points for okay. the dagger. All right. And then this will be for the psychic blade. Four, five. Five points. So seven points of piercing, five points of psychic damage. Okay. All right. The harpy gets hit by two daggers and just here. <laughs> Uh, and then continue to move forward uh, after Helos. Okay. Uh, 
I'll cast a Scorching Ray. Okay. So I gotta make a ranged spell attack. I believe I hit on a... Is it plus eight? Plus eight, yeah. Okay. Uh, does an unnatural 20 hit? Yep. Okay. So... Uh, <laughs> so it's time to kill. <laughs> so it's three rays of fire, one target, or several. So I'm going to target them all at the same, at the harpy. Sure. Uh, three scorching ray shots. So on a hit, I deal 2d6 of fire. So you deal six. What? So because you're hitting with all three rays, oh, it's yeah, 2d6 yeah, yeah. each oh, ray, yeah. so you're hitting with six. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Six, D6. Did somebody say fried harpy wings? Ooh. Seven, two, four, oh, my God. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 16, 20, 22. 22. 22 points of fire 22 damage. 22 damage fire. It is still alive. Okay. It is very crispy. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. As you're... <laughs> the harpy is still moving oh, forward. Man. As it closes the gap between itself and Austin, it's going to try and hit Austin multiple times. Well, go on. Well, go on. Um, Does a four and a seven. If it's not 25. 25 or 24? (laughs) Right now, it's for you. It's 20. You're not inside your shell. I am in my shell. inside of his shell. Oh, 24. (laughs) It's not 24, then no. (laughs) Well, Well, that's it. All right. That's it for the harpies? All right, it's back up to you then, bud. You're up in the gonna first. Gonna take my order. bonus action to uh, so it, it hits me, right? It's it tries to like swipe at you, and it just and it just kind of scratches the it shell. Scratches the shell. I'm going to uh, after it scratches my my shell, I'm gonna pop out of the uh, um pop out of the shell <laughs> just like that, and then I'm going to call the uh, the mirage or the the echo up over mm-hmm. to it as well, and then I'm going to. Uh, Make the two attacks, and then I'm going to expend one of the uh, uh, unleash incarnations on it. Okay, before you expend the un- the unleash, just make right. the two attacks first. Make okay. the two attacks. You might just kill it outright. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Jason's, <laughs> Jason's uh, trying to trouble. yeah. Jason's trying to have you save your resources. <laughs> you might just kill it outright. Where's your D twenty, bud? No, you don't understand. I have to catch wall flame on the single. Oh. <laughs> the single when you said <laughs> fireball, I was like. <laughs> and Zach was like, should I just fireball it? I'm like, it's one harpy. Save it for like when there's six of them. I got a 15 and a 10. Yeah, it, it dies. <laughs> so just, yeah. Yeah, because I can't imagine you doing less than four damage. I would deal exactly four damage. Yeah, you would, yeah the first attack would deal well, exactly unless four. I... The 10 wouldn't hit. You said it was a 16 and a 10? Yeah. So 16 will hit. That just and your... I'll deal seven. You'll deal seven damage killing it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's Dunzo. Skewered on the fork. Crispy Harpy on the fork. Stab it. Just like kind of hold it there and just, just sling it off into the bushes. All right. Yeah. Sling it off into the bushes. Heck yeah. The, merchant, the merchants are completely impressed and they're just like, okay. I didn't, I didn't think that would happen, but. This Harpy dead. Yeet. All right. You guys press onward. As the merchants continue to move forward, um, about 80 feet in front of you, you hear as a large owl bear is uh, on on like by a tree, kind of scratching the tree. So it's it's not really messing with us. It has yeah, it hasn't confronted you at all. I it's, say we just leave it alone. It's 80 feet away. Man's just vibing. Man's just vibing. Yeah, I'm good with leaving it alone. I can just distract it if we need to. Okay, the merchants are like peeing themselves as they're like, you just, you don't want to do anything about that? Um, no. Yeah, Whisper just kind of shakes his head. If there's no need to kill gotta, it, we're not going to. You got to just live and let live, man. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, what he said. And as the, the horses like kind of speed up to go past the owlbear very fast, the owlbear pays no mind. It just continues to scratch the tree. Scratching away. As we keep walking by, and just, goodbye, friend. And just keep going. All right. You guys make it past the owlbear, and as you pass the owlbear, you notice that there is a large serpent-like creature up ahead. How oh, far? No. Um, let's say about fifty feet. Okay. So before this, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the merchant really quick. What are you transporting? And he's like, monster bait. Oh, of course, he I is. thought you were told this by by Eliza. I'm just gonna whisper like in like enthusiastically shakes his head like no, we were not informed. Wait, so like like you guys are the bait? 
or no, and he like you he pulls back the curtain behind one of the like the big caravan he pulls mm-hmm. back the curtain and he shows you literally like a large cube of like pudding like substance that is emitting an aroma that will literally bring monsters in he's like yeah we we give it to stadiums so they can you know have them in the fight and, and you guys don't usually have protection yeah most of us end up dead most of the time this sounds like an incredibly stupid and you're plan. okay with this well we get paid very well <laughs> i think your corpses get paid pretty well <laughs> well our families yes but whisper whisper kind of like opens his beak and then like a voice that is very clearly not his is just hall <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, yeah, our families. I mean, if we die, all of our money as gets to our family. As he's saying this, you can look into the forest and you see multiple caravans just destroyed. Hey, this is Helios, totally harsh and my mellow man. What's wrong with these people? So, Whisper opens his beak again, and this time in kind of like a airier, uh, like an airy toned, like male voices. Well, it couldn't be me. Just closes his beak again. Yep. I I do it for the greater man of my family. And, and he, as you guys are talking, he looks at it and goes, but what is that thing? And you see a large serpent with a couple of legs at this point in the distance, kind of just burrowing and poking his head up and burrowing. Oh, hey there. If you like what you saw today, you should like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Also, don't forget to check out our Patreon, Discord, and MyVelvetGames.com. What is that?